Ten days after baby William's death, in June 1819, the Shelleys left Rome and headed for Tuscany. In early September, Percy was shocked by the news from England of the mid-August massacre of Peterloo. The military had charged into a peaceful demonstration, killing at least six people and wounding more than 80. As an immediate reaction, he wrote The Mask of Anarchy. As I lay asleep in Italy, there came a voice from over the sea, and with great power it forth led me to walk in the visions of Posey. I met murder on the way. He had a mask like Castlereagh. Very smooth he looked, yet grim. Seven bloodhounds followed him. All were fat, and well they might be in admirable plight. For one by one, and two by two, he tossed them human hearts to chew, which from his wide cloak he drew. In autumn 1819, Percy, Mary, and her stepsister Claire Clermont headed for Florence for the birth of Mary's baby. Once again, they settled into life in the city. Waiting for their son to come, Percy wrote Ode to the West Wind, inspired by his walks along the Lungarno. Drive my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth, and, by the incantation of this verse, scatter, as from an unextinguished hearth, ashes and sparks, my words among mankind. Be, through my lips to unawakened earth, the trumpet of a prophecy, O wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Percy and Mary's baby was just two months old when they set off for Pisa. Percy loved sailing his small skiff in the rivers and canals of the Maremma countryside and pursued some romantic adventures with other women. One of these, Jane, would later become the inspiration for several poems and gifts. Ariel to Miranda, take this slave of music for the sake of him who is the slave of thee, and teach it all the harmony in which thou canst, and only thou, make the delighted spirit glow, till joy denies itself again, and too intense is turned to pain. The Shelleys formed the core of what later became known as the Pisan Circle especially after Byron's move to the city, in November 1821. This was a riotous time, filled with parties and rowdy hunting expeditions. The old Byron-Shelley rivalry resurfaced even during the construction and the naming of their two specially built yachts, the Bolivar and the Don Juan. Certain it is that Lord Byron has made me bitterly feel the inferiority which the world had presumed to place between us, and which subsists nowhere in reality but in our talents, which are not our own by natures, or in our rank, which is not our own by fortunes. I will tell you more when we meet. In the meantime, sea air is necessary. In April 1822, the Shelleys moved to Lerici on the Ligurian coast. Mary never liked their home, the Casamagni, and it turned out to be an unhappy choice from the start. Mary was pregnant again, but lost her baby on 16th of June, following a hemorrhage that almost killed her. Percy was also unwell and had disturbing nightmares, but at least he was writing once more and set to work on his last, unfinished poem the triumph of life. Swift as a spirit hastening to his task of glory and of good, the sun sprang forth rejoicing in his splendor, and the mask of darkness fell from the awakened earth. 
The smokeless altars of the mountain snows flamed above crimson clouds, and at the birth of light, the ocean's horizon arose, to which the birds tempered their matin lay. All flowers in field or forest, which unclosed their trembling eyelids to the kiss of day. On the 8th of July, Percy, aged only 29, was sailing the Don Juan back to Glerici from Livorno when he hit a violent, unexpected storm. The boat sank and Shelley, together with Jane's husband Edward and the boat hand Charles Vivian, all drowned. Then what is life, I said. The cripple cast his eye upon the car which now had rolled onward as if that look must be the last, and answered, happy those for whom the fold of Shelley's body was found 10 days later on the beach north of Viareggio. His friend, Trelawney, organized a cremation on the shore in the company of Byron and a few local fishermen. A few months later, Shelley's ashes were interred in Rome's non-Catholic cemetery. <laughs>